Oh, this, this is working so well. Oh no! Oh, that's disgusting, but I feel like we can touch this. My sh Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you, you, right there, Am I pointing right? Yes, I am. Look, right in the middle. Oh, well, wherever you are in the world, welcome to our kitchen. Today, we're doing another kitchen gadget testing video, part of the epic playlist uh, where we just test loads of gadgets that you guys send me, send me links to, or I source. Got massive box still to get through. We're working our way through. But please remember before commenting down below that some of these gadgets can, in fact, there's one in particular, can help people that struggle with certain tasks in the kitchen for a variety of reasons. I've always said that it's extremely important. Um, let's get going, shall we? A pie. Yes, pie. The other day I was looking for my baking beads, which is a really exciting thing to say, but that's what happens when you turn 40. You like you go from, let's have a wild night out to, uh, excuse me, where are my baking beads? Mrs. B has decided to throw them out. She said they were ruined. And I'm like, no, they're not ruined. They've just got like scorch marks on it from when I've used them so much. It's, it's fine because that's where this comes in. Uh, this is something uh, called the pie weight. It's a way of blind baking the pastry in your pie, particularly on the base, because if you don't do that, you can get like quite a soggy or even raw uh, uncooked bottom. So this thing um, is like, kind of like a vented frisbee. And it's got like silicon sort of heat proof flaps on it so it can be adaptable for uh, nine to 11 inch pie pans. And it's got this sort of like, I've just noticed it's like a pie. Can you see it's an actual pie shaped handle on it, which I just, I quite like playing with it. But you put that into a pie dish like this. <laughs> yeah, like that. Uh, this is a large pie dish and it will fit in there because as you can see, it's still got a bit more to give. Those silicon edges will just kind of like support the side walls of the pastry. It's not too heavy, but it's gonna be enough to just weigh it down. The weight is in this uh, rim. The whole thing is just going to replace what I would normally put in a bit of baking paper and uh, the baking beads uh, and it does that whole job. Now if only I had another pastry related gadget to justify doing this. I do. Possibly a random epic rolling pin. <laughs> oh crikey. <laughs> but this uh, from uh, Lakeland uh, is uh, a cooling rolling pin. So when you roll out pastry, mine's in the fridge at the moment. I've got the ready roll stuff in a block or we've made our own on the channel a fair few times here. You try your best to keep it cool because uh, once it gets warmed and used to room temperature, which in here is warm today. Oh my gosh, can you feel that? Woo! It starts to stick to your rolling pin, but this rolling pin, right, check this out. Can you see there's actually a whole end which you can actually put your flour in there to dust like your work surface. What a cool idea that is. But anyhow, you've got your flour in one end, but in here, we can put in here cold water. So you can roll out your pastry and hopefully it shouldn't stick. So I've got some pastry ready to roll to go with our um, pie weight. You would not want the flour and the water being in the same chamber, would you? <laughs> so you wouldn't think that this is your roll. Look, I can go like that. There is no flour in there apart from me not being able to pour it properly or with a spoon. But then we can twist this 980 degrees and then, oh yes, it's a rolling pin with a built-in flour dispenser, sieve, whatever you want to call it. Ugh, pull the plug out. So you see, we've got that hole there and it goes down quite far. Let's, let's pour this in. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I can feel it getting really cold. Can we get some ice in there? Oh, that's a bit too big. Oh no, it's going in, amazing. <laughs> okay, oh my gosh, that's freezing. So this is chilled in the fridge, this uh, block of pastry. Oh wow, this is not sticking at all. Hey, this is cool, right? This is cool. If I got my other rolling pin out, I would normally have to flour it loads. That is working an absolute charm. Oh, this, this is working so well. Ah. Oh. And then, boom, in goes our pie weight. So just while we're getting the oven preheated, because I am so prepared, I forgot to do it. Uh, I was just a bit too excited about the gadgets. Now, the strange thing for me is my rolling pin has gone in the fridge to keep cool whilst this warms. If we need any pastry, we might do some strips on top or we might just do a lid, we might go old school. But all you're basically trying to do by doing a blind bake is seal the pastry kind of in place. And what we tend to do is do baking beads for like 10 minutes or so, last five minutes, uh, take it off because it's set in place just to brown. It gives it a nice little crispness. Merry Christmas. So we'll jolly well see. 
but that apparently should do the works. All right, so uh, when we do pastry, if you wish to, you can do an egg wash, you can do a milk wash, you can do a, a water wash. Is that a film? Kevin Costner? If you beat together an egg, you've got the egg white and the yolk together, it gives you a nice colour. If you do milk, apparently it gives you a lighter colour too. Or, if you want, you could separate the egg uh, and just get the yolk for a slightly more golden colour. This from Culinaire is an egg separator. Separates egg yolks and whites mess-free. I've got a few different variations of egg separators from the egg stream. Uh, to nice simple ones like this, uh, still in my box that I'm rummaging through, so I thought this would be a nice quick one. Uh, this clips on a bowl and uh, catches the egg in there, so uh, let's see if it does it whilst uh, that bakes. This egg separator is a handy gadget for any home baker or bakers at work. Come on, let's not discriminate. Crack. And the cup in here should act. Oh no! Look at that! It's failed! Blimey! Right, now this is the cause of a big argument between me and Mrs B. We're not like divorce territory, but we've, we've discussed this on camera before. These eggs have been left out at room temperature, what Mrs B says they should be. And I disagree. I always say when you crack an egg, it is best done cold. But this is one that has been put in the fridge. Look how much firmer that yolk is. Even the white is like, no, let's stay together. The fridge method is definitely giving it more tension, more action. It doesn't know what to do, it's a bit shell shot. Oh my god. Look, if I lift it, it is solid, but what, maybe if I give it some gravity? <laughs> oh, that's disgusting, but also quite fun. Can we scrape it off the side? Oh, there we go. Oh, it's, yeah, it's going yoki. All right, it's going yoki. Yoki, yoki. Stay there. Carry yoki. So does it work? Yeah, I think just about, but I have had... <laughs> I've had better ones. This yolk's gonna go on the crust. All right, it's about a minute left, maybe just under that. I think it's worked. This is, uh, the trivets that I use in my video, a lot of people are like, where'd you get those from? Uh, these were Joseph Joseph ones, uh, and I really like them. And I think I should just set up a list on my website of all the stuff that I use that I really, really like. Um, yeah, that'll probably save a lot of time for everyone, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, baby, look at that. Just slightly, lightly golden. And can we take, I feel like we could touch this. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. So you can see how that much that's weighed that down. It's just very lightly browned it and that is enough because it's going to stop our filling pouring out of it. Because if that wasn't there with that lamination like what's happened here, all those layers would have, thanks oven timer, would have puffed right up. Awesome. So I'm just getting some ready-made pie filling. Da, 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 da. Oh my gosh, have I even, I bought two tins just in case. Is there gonna be enough? Well, I found some custard, that'll do. And I will say this, um, this can opener I've got right here, um, that's actually by Culinaire as well, the people that did the egg gadget. My favorite one actually got broken. It, yeah, it's like, it's okay. I like it, but it's a bit near. Anyhow, oh, um, we'll flour this down a little bit more. So yeah, so it's not saying you don't flour it because you, of course you need to for your surface. Need to. Sugar bay? <laughs> no, come on now. And then back in there, same temperature. And hopefully jobs are good in. Right, uh, anyone fancy a drink? Uh, these are Easter Ning Forum. Hopefully that translates to ice cube balls or I'm gonna look like a complete plonker. Standard. You basically, there's a very small diagram here where you can open them up, uh, you pour some water in, but it suggests putting in a citrus fruit. Hmm. Did I do two last night and put them in the freezer? Hmm. Here they are. Uh, we've got one. Wow, it's open slightly. Can you see? And this one has opened slightly too. Ooh, expansion. And that's it, really. <laughs> It's cooled it down and given it a very, very, very light citrus flavour. But leave that in for a couple of minutes. Jimmy, oh, brilliant, brilliant. You get the idea. One of you guys is gonna love that. I say that because uh, one lucky patron will get these on the top tier of my Patreon. I sign and give these away. I think Bry uh, won the last one. Congrats to you, my friend. Uh, remember also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, if you want freshly baked videos every single week, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And of course, if you are, make sure your notifications are turned on and you follow me on social media because I tell you about new videos there too. Right. Let's crack on. Oh, wow. Oh, check that pie out. It's a pie. 
folks, uh, we know Sheffern. I don't even need to look on the back of the box. There's a guy called Famous Inventor, David Holcomb. We've been there a lot, and we'll hopefully one day David and I will dine on a fine Tesco sandwich. But I'm disappointed in Sheffern today, because it could be me, it probably is me, but if you remember, this one, right, this is called the Garlic Zoom Garlic Chopper. It's basically like a nice little car for garlic, and you wheel it along, it chops it, it's got blades in there like so. In fact, I'll, I'll just get it right out. Because I have had this before, except I think, I'm fairly certain, it was brown and it was for chopping walnuts. Now what they've probably done, it's probably like the walnut one is outdated now and they've gone with this, or vice versa, I don't know. Put apparently a maximum of three garlic cloves in there. One just went on the floor, we'll go with two. We'll literally go with two. Not, I can't really see what's going on in there, so I'm not looking. Oh wow, oh wow. Look at that, all finely diced garlic on the, on the sunroof of the car. Oh wow, okay, I think I might take it back. That's actually pretty cool. Damn it! Open it up, push it out, and um, well that blooming stinks, but it's quite good. All right, two more to go. You might remember on the last video we did the kettle tipper. This was a link that I was sent from someone that actually did struggle uh, to use a kettle and wanted me to try it out. I did my best. No, Bri, you have that, so hopefully you're all right, mate. Um, take your time with it. But in that video, I also said that I had another uh, tool that I've been sent. Now, this one's more for uh, food preparation. It's basically a really sharp knife uh, with an angle to help people that, I guess, struggle uh, with that standard motion of holding a knife and pushing down to effect. And it's got a really nice non-slip grip. Now, I'm not obviously fully aware of the struggles that some people would have when using a knife, you know, holding it like this, like I would do, but for some people that is not possible or it's a real struggle. And apparently by using this instead, which is the grip, you kind of hold it a bit like a joystick when you're playing an old school video game. It very much reminds me of an Atari 2600 controller with the red button, do -do -do -do, playing Pitfall. That's old school. So let's slice up four or five things and see if it's any good. Right, we're gonna start with a tomato. So I'm gonna hold this, uh, and I guess you would kind of pinch it here like so, or there are tools that you can hold it in place. And it's just that serration. That is a very, very sharp knife. And actually quite cool because you can pick things up with it. I assume, well, when I first saw it, I was thinking, oh yeah, that's for a cheese knife. But to actually grab something, like that and lift it up. I don't know, maybe that is useful. So a tomato is all right, how about a courgette? So yeah, pepper's a little bit more stubborn, but so we'll just try and take a cheek off. <laughs> Feels like I'm using a saw. As you know, I've got a left-handed serrated knife and it helps me cut straight. It generally was amazing. If you've missed the left-handed gadget video, that was a proper stonker. I'm gonna do a follow-up. That is cutting through, oh wow. It's fairly straight. This is actually a really cool knife anyway. But I could be testing it on lots of other things, but I thought that a butternut squash, that is pretty full on. Oh, that's tough. But if I'm just let the serration do the work. Oh wow, one of the toughest vegetables I could find. I forget the name of the person that specifically told me to get this, but hopefully this has been a nice little showcase that that will hopefully help a lot of people in the kitchen. Blooming awesome. All right, this last one, although there is a slightly bonus one that I just ran, that I remembered that I had in my box. I was like, oh, that yeah, kind of relates to this. This is by Joseph. Joseph uh, is the three-in-one corkscrew. It's called the Bar Star. So it's a bottle cap opener. It's also a corkscrew, but there is additionally a foil cutter for your wine bottle. I make this myself sound so sophisticated, like I have wine all the time. Uh, on the bottom, can you see there's like these edges here where we had that, what, what was that on? Ah. Oh, do you remember that wish gadget thing that I had that opened the uh, cans of drink? It had those on there and it took the lid fully off a can of drink. That's the same thing. <laughs> We've combined three bottle opening tools into one compact design. I didn't realize that was a, an actual tool to cut the foil off of your wine. Because normally you just get the old tab and just peel it off. So, uh, yeah. All right, so I've got some uh, mixed fruit tropical cider uh, to show the bottle opener. So uh, we've got it out of the packaging. Don't need to wash this really, but oh my gosh. Oh, is the foil cutter loose? Oh, okay, right. So this is like literally a separate little tool that they could sell separately. Well, let's just do it. I mean, that feels really sturdy, actually. I like that. I mean, this is going to work, surely. I'll just, just, oh my gosh, that comes off as well. Okay. 
Ugh. And you can't lock that in to stop that happening again. Well, that wasn't amazing. Hey ho. Wow, that tastes like a cake. There's a lot of sugar in there. <laughs> well, it's not really about that. It's, it's more about the wine bottle, what it does here. So we have got this three in one. So it really is three in one because you can take it apart into the separate tools, um, except that needs to work in conjunction with this to do the cork. Place the foil, ow, wow, that's sharp. Ooh, place the foil cutter onto the top of the neck of the bottle and squeeze sides, twisting it to cut, okay? We're gonna sit this down and that is slightly, um, actually it's hard to see. It's actually just slightly above um, the foil tab line. So I suppose if we ruin this, which I'm pinching together now, and we'll rotate the bottle. Oh, I can hear a, I could hear it like a tearing sound. Oh, oh, that has taken it off like a dream. Almost makes it look more expensive, the bottle now. Look at that, it looks like fancy. All right, okay. So whereas I wasn't really sure with the uh, cap remover, it did get it off, to be honest. And if you're that desperate to so put on the video, you can go old school and just use your teeth. Don't do that. Everyone's got a friend. If it's not you that did it, everyone had a friend that did that. You're like, ooh. Push holder down over neck of bottle and grip the sides firmly. Replace the screw into the holder. Push down and twist clockwise into the cork. To remove cork from holder, squeeze sides and twist anti-clockwise. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wow. Look, look, look. Can you see it's coming out? If I keep twisting, it is taking the cork out, but it tells me not to do that. Push down and twist clockwise into the cork. To remove the cork from the holder, squeeze. Hang on. Remove the screw, push the, to remove the cork from the holder, squeeze the sides again, but twist anti-clockwise. I don't get this. Is this right? <laughs> what? I mean, it's, it's, it's there, it is nearly there. I've got another bottle. Mrs. B said to put a spoon in it and keep it in the fridge and it keeps the sparkle, so I guess she'll be happy with that. Remove the screw. Push the holder down over the neck of the bottle and grip the sides firmly. Push down and twist clockwise into the cork. Right, so now, move the cork from the holder, squeeze the sides and twist anti-clockwise. Right, so do I, do I just go like that now? But look, look, that's spinning. Look, it, it kind of, oh, 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 and anti-clockwise? No, that's going out of it. What? There's something not right here, folks. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. And then to remove it, you twist the thing anti-clockwise, pop it off like that. Oh my goodness. But you, you've still got to like, unthread it from this. I don't know, that's a lot of work, isn't it? Our favorite way of getting a cork out of the bottle was from a hacks video where you use a chef's blowtorch and it goes ping. So fun. But in my gadget box, I've got a couple more wine bottle openers to look at. Uh, but for now, I still think, as fun as that was, I can't rule out that the cap thing removal, out of all of that, this was amazing. <laughs> Anyhow, well, Mrs. B's gonna love the wine. And what better way to finish <laughs> than trying out one more. This is something by Joy. Do you remember them? I think we did like some sort of weird celery or carrot holder thing with hummus. It's pretty cool. Um, they always do like quite quirky gadgets. These are wine glass markers. You basically got four different colored markers in there. You've got a uh, Gold, silver, red, and green. Uh, you can decorate and identify each guest's drink. So is this a kitchen gadget? Maybe, maybe not. It's, it's effectively a pen. This is Mrs. B's favorite glass. So um, apparently you can easily wash it clean. So if I go Barry, <laughs> I can't even spell my name. Nice little cheeky smiley face like that, okay? Can you, can you see that? So I'm at a party, I'm going out, oh, where did I put my glass? And then we can go, oh, it's Barry's glass. Oh. But there's kind of like a sort of lipstick 
like look to it. It's a little bit glossy, so um, it makes it look a bit more sophisticated. Uh, so there it is in the washing up, and we're gonna have a little squirt of washing up liquid on there. I should not really be doing this one-handed, but oh wow, look at that! Oh, that's coming straight off. Look at that. <laughs> She'll never know. So well, there we go then folks, another kitchen gadget video in the bag, you've made it this far, go put on your sweatband, have a barathon, check out the rest of the ones on the playlist, don't forget if you've seen any cool gadgets do tag me on social media, you guys do that every day and I love it. Thank you so much for watching, massively appreciate it. My favourite one today, I like them all, even the ice cube thing, even the garlic zoom thing. The rolling pin I think is a proper stonker, so uh, let me know what you think is your best down below. Take care and I'll see you soon, bye! Oh, I see.